Right, so we're in T3's offices and Sony have sent us down their brand new PS4. This is the first time this machine has been given to journalists to have a look at outside of a glass box. So let's have a look. As you can see, it's very, very sleek in its design. Uh, it basically looks like the Xbox One in a wind tunnel. Um, if you have a look at the top there, you've got a matte finish over here and a reflective one there, which is a very, very fingerprint sensitive, so I'm not going to touch it too much. At the back, you've got several ports. You've got your HDMI, you've got your optical port, you've got your LAN connector, you've got your AUX port, and you've obviously got a port for the power cable to go in. You've also got a huge series of vents back here, so this probably keeps the machine quite cool. At the front, you've got your USB ports, which are for the recharging of the controller and your slot for your PS4 games. The controller itself um, is actually rather different to its predecessor if we put them both together like that. Looking at the side by side, the PS4 controller is a little more chunkier than its predecessor, but its joysticks are a lot smaller and they fit more flush against your thumbs. Um, the face buttons and the D-pad are pretty much the same, except they're more flush against the controller on the PS4. The triggers are also a lot smaller, as are the shoulder buttons. Perhaps the biggest difference between these two controllers is obviously the addition of the touchpad, um, which you can click in to use it as a start button. So don't worry, your start button and your ability to pause your game has not disappeared into the ether. Um, this is also used in conjunction with games. At a demo that we recently saw where you could uh, use the touchpad in conjunction with a camera that you could use it to flick robots from out of the controller onto the screen in front of you. The the controller also has rumble filters inside it, which give you the impression that weight can be displaced inside it. In the same demo where we were flicking robots onto a screen, we could also pull the robots into the controller, and then when you rolled the controller from side to side, the rumble filters displaced the weight, so it actually felt like robots were rolling around inside your controller, which was pretty cool. You got your PS button, which is where you would expect it to be, but you also have a, a speaker just above that. On the back, you've got a port for a bespoke PS4 headset, and on the front you obviously have the port for your recharge cable. The other big addition to this controller is your share button, which allows you to instantaneously share your gaming god moments with all your friends on the PSN. Okay, looking at the PS4 next to the PS3, it's interesting to see that the PS4 is actually smaller than its predecessor. And this is a PS3 Slim, by the way. This isn't the big chunky beast that went on sale all those years ago. If I hold the PS4 over the PS3, you can actually see that the PS3 sticks out on either side of the PS4. Um, a lot of people like to store their PS3 on its side, like so. I'm not sure I would actually try that with the PS4. I mean, we have been sent a stand for it, um, so apparently you can stand it on its side. But the stand itself, as you can see, doesn't really increase the PS4's base very much. So I don't know about you, I'd probably store this as is underneath my television set.